And Bella, and he has to be Langosiami, Gosiami. Well, it is about that time, uh, that time of the day again, where the divine technician is taking us for a ride in the 31 days journey of our new identity in Christ. Let's welcome him on episode 10. Namuisha, Sia Gomugela Babi Unjani Unjani. Thank you, sis. Promising your pillar, the cool, and also it sounds like all the listeners, Facebook, Logute FM, and those who are connecting on other different platforms. I greet you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. As, uh, as promise has already said today, we are on um, episode 10. And I've promised that on episode 10, we'll be dealing with all the questions that you might be having. So if you have questions, you can still ask today. But um, I didn't receive much questions. Thank you for the comments. We have received comments, people commenting, saying we are with you. Thank you for the clarity. And some have been sharing the, the teachings. Thank you very much. And may God bless you. So what I'm going to do today, I'll go straight to the question which has been asked by Pastalina Nisi from Mitlibek. She asked a question. She sent, she sent a message. It says, greeting Mfundisi. My question is for the 31 days journey of our new identity in Christ. It's under men, part one. You mentioned that the word Elohim is in plural and means ruler, judges, angels, etc. If that's the case, who then exactly created the heavens and the earth? Because we know Jehovah being the creator. Then she said that he will be a church, but he will connect later to watch the video online hallelujah so i hope and i believe that we all understand the question that he asked because we said if you read genesis chapter one to chapter five the word god is actually elohim it's only on chapter six verse five where they used the word jehovah that means the self-existent one so now then the question is who then created all these things now, there is something that I want to bring to our attention. And please understand me very well. The purpose of this teaching is to point you towards the right direction. Most of us, we, um, when we started to believe in God, we started to sit on our brains and we, started, um, we stopped thinking. We stopped questioning and scrutinizing things. So please, I just want to challenge you to come out of that comfort zone and know that things must be questioned things must be scrutinized. So thank you very much for the question from uh, Pastor Lina. Then um, the answer that I'm going to give, I'm going to give a lot of verses to try to support what I'm going to bring here. Most of us in our minds, we think that the earth is just 6,000 years because that's what we see in scripture. And the truth of the matter is the earth is not 6,000 years old. When science is talking about the earth being old, we need to understand that it is true. It is a fact and it is true. But the 6,000 years that we are talking about is just a human history. It's a history of a human being, not really of the whole earth. If you can, please underline that one. Because I wish I can go deeper on other things, but it's not that necessary. But if you go back and you check, you will realize that in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, there is a very huge gap there. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, you see. And from there, it says the earth was without form. There is no way, when, you're reading from, when you are reading from there, where you see God creating the earth that was without form. Everything that God was creating, it was having form. But the reason why the earth was without form now, it is because there is an event, there is something that happened that caused the earth to be without form. That does not mean that initially the earth was without form. Because you will see that everything that God created, it was perfect. So the question is, why was the earth not perfect? Now, we see the devil appearing in Genesis chapter 2 in the Garden of Eden. Did we, do we know when the devil was cast out to the earth? Because he's just appearing the deceiving man. It means there was a time when he came here on earth when he was kicked out of heaven. And what happened when he fell here on earth? And the Bible says, I think it's one third of the stars 
wapi hukange msila wake meaning some of the angels one third were taken together were, were, were taken by the devil when he was thrown into the earth you understand and then now if the devil came with one third of the angels because remember when he started to rebel against god if we if you are looking at that and maybe he got some of the followers who said yeah we are with you bra devil we are going to be with you we are voting for you you can really overthrow god and take over you can also be worship you can also be a god if that is the case and when he was thrown from heaven because of his pride there there is one set of angels that he took over with him and then now it means when they came here something happened it might happen that the chaos that caused everything to be without form it was the fall of the devil but i'm not there we are not going to go deeper in that but there is one thing that i want us to look at now when you read the bible in the book of second peter chapter 3 verse 8 it says but do you not overlook this one fact beloved that with the lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day now we are looking at god creating the heavens and the earth and everything within six days according to our minds we will think that god just spoke and pish, pish, things just happened what if some of these things were a process that took thousands of years but just because a thousand years is like one day into the lord and we conclude that it is really one day i don't know if you understand what i'm saying here <laughs> um they are going to say is the bible says then evening came but if god says one day it's a thousand years even though it will show evening and morning but to god there there can be an evening and a morning within thousand years and to us we'll say it's a thousand years and yet god says it is just one day now i'm continuing again because the question is who then created now we think that god is alone there is only god there is jesus there is the holy spirit maybe and just angels in heaven that's what we are thinking in our minds because when we look at the scriptures they are not detailed about other things but i just want to challenge your thinking today and show you some of the things that i want us to look at number one when you look at the devil because the devil remember fell from heaven and he copied the system of heaven if he copied the system of heaven and we look at the devil as, as somebody who is very organized and um i'm going to show you some of the verses that are showing that he's got structures in his kingdom and if the devil is that organized who says god does not have structures and who says that god is not organized now in our government we've got um ramaphosa is our president if ramaphosa says something he will say it but are we aware that it's not ramaphosa, ramaphosa who will come down and execute that thing that he has declared he just speak and his authority will cause those that are under his authority to run and execute the instructions for an example he said 15 december is going to be a holiday because of rugby and the ramaphosa did not go around and made it a holiday but there are people who executed and made sure that that um whatever he said happens and yet we are saying it's ramaphosa who declared and made it a public holiday so ramaphosa when we are talking about the government most of the time we will look at ramaphosa and say our government is failing us even if it is not his fault we've got ministers there is a minister of defense there is a minister of um, education there is a minister of finance and all these ministers if they make a mistake we will always say the government because the person in charge of everything it is ramaphosa so every time we will look at ramaphosa we will look at the president and yet he's got a cabinet that he's working with under him he speak and things happen not because he stands up and do things but there are those that he has assigned those that are in charge and they make sure that what has been said happens let me give you a scripture in the book of um, revelation chapter 4 we are going to start reading from verse 4 i just want to reveal some of the things around the throne were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads verse 5 from the throne came flashes of lightning a rumbling and pearls of thunder and therefore the throne um and before the throne 
were burning seven torches of fire with the seven spirits of God. Now you see, we have seen 24 elders. We are seeing seven spirits of God. Right? Keep that one in mind. And before the throne, um, they were there as if it were a sea of glass, like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. Now, when you read here, you'll realize that in heaven there was a discussion. Who are we going to send into the earth? Who will open the seals? They are discussing in the, in the parliament of heaven. And then now, John says, when there was no man found, I cried because no one was found. And the, the voice of an angel came and said, do not cry because the lamb of the tribe of Judah has been found worthy. You understand? It is a discussion that is taking place in the parliament of heaven. But the question is, who is the president? Because we will always look at the president. Now, the Bible says the angels are ministering spirits, helping the heirs of salvation. But we are not, we are not commanded anywhere in the Bible to speak to angels, meaning like I can pray and call unto angels. We don't see that happening. Every time when we pray, we are talking to God. It's more like you are having a concern. You are talking to Ramaphosa. But Ramaphosa will assign the right people to do the work or to do the job. So God will assign the right people or right um angels rulers authorities or whatever it is that he has put in place to do what it is supposed to do let me give you another verse before we close in the book of daniel chapter 10 verse 13 the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me 21 days but michael one of the chief princes came to help me for i was left there with the kings of persia listen um it says the prince of the kingdom of persia number one and it says michael one of the chief princes meaning the chief princes in god they are men is not one as much as we see my michael a lot because the bible says michael is actually a garden angel or the chief prince of israel of israel you understand but there are other chief princes meaning in the spirit and in god we've got this organized structure if you read the book of noah it will tell you about watchers who actually sent here on earth to actually guard and to look on the earth. They were responsible for different regions. And we as children of God, we don't understand that in the spirit, it's not just God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit only. But God the Father has got his cabinet, he has got angels, he has got chief princes. It's a, it's a hierarchy, a structure that has been put in place so that things can be done in order. You understand? Do you think when, when you speak, uh, God just jumps. There is a garden angel that looks after you. You understand? And it really shows here, according to Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, there are angels that are looking at different places. You understand? You'll find that in every region, there are angels in the spirit looking and taking care of those places. So meaning the affairs of that place will be taken care of by the angels which are assigned or by the entities, the rulers, the Elohims that are assigned into that place. Now back to the question. Am I saying that it's not God the Father who has created? This is what I'm saying. God has got his cabinet that he's working with. Sometimes he will speak and it is not him who will bow and do things. But some of these entities, they are the ones that will execute the words that God is speaking to make sure that things are done. One man says in the Bible, Jesus, say a word because I'm a man under authority. When I speak, one will go. And I say that to that one, come. And he comes. He says, you are a man of authority, Jesus. Speak a word and my son will be, will be healed. That man understood that when Jesus speaks, there are those that will go and execute while Jesus is here. So if we are saying the word is powerful, it's not because the word do things on its own. But the word is powerful enough to cause those that are in charge under that command to execute and make sure that things happen. I believe that this one will actually bring clarity. Because of time, let me stop here, my sister. Thank you very much. <laughs> because these are very very beautiful revelations and we get to understand things that they would say as this toilet is cut as a boot amen no siya bonga kun my sister thank you very much oh amen amen